Hey y'all, it's Nick for Undefeated Productions, and welcome back to The 3-2 Pitch, our podcast where me and Drew go around and talk about things around the world of baseball. And you know, we promised it, another episode coming out this week. Had a little bit of struggles getting that one out. Uh, we had a power surge, so the lost connection, and then the resolution side was bad. Anyways, we got it up today, and this one will ho- hopefully be turned around by tomorrow. So you'll be watching this on Friday. If not, at the worst, Saturday, I don't have baseball, so that'll be up. And today we're going to highlight uh, a recap of the things that have happened. There's been a lot of big signings and trades throughout baseball. We're going to be talking about, uh, Drew's going to talk about the new rules and, uh, and highlighting the postseason because I know that's something that a lot of people are confused about. And finally, we're going to give our division preview. So Drew, before we get started, how are you feeling, man? I'm feeling good. I got my uh, 1989 uh, Giants hat on. They, they used to call themselves Hum Baby. And I, I'm aware that every single person that watches this is was not born in 1989, uh, except my buddy Serge. Thanks, Serge, for subscribing and watching at work. We appreciate you. Uh, but other than that, you know, I know this is a it's a millennial kind of crowd. But this hat, dude, this is like look at this. And for you kids out there, that was the year that the San Francisco Giants played the Oakland A's in the World Series. And something happened during that series, and it was a big freaking earthquake. (laughs) And the earthquake actually tilted the entire trajectory of that series. It was unbelievable. At that time, the A's had Dave Stewart and Mike Moore as the number one and number two starters. The Giants actually had more, more depth in their rotation, but they didn't have the number one, number two guy. Well, what happened was games one and two were played. The A's, of course, won both games in Oakland. And then the earthquake hit before game three. And when the series came back nine days later, the A's got to throw Stewart and Moore again. And, of course, they swept them to win their only World Series out of three years where they were pretty much the dominant team in baseball. Something tells me that the A's may not make the World Series this year, though. And we'll get to that in just a moment. Yeah, for sure. And we'll we'll talk about... uh what we're looking at uh excuse my uh slightly black eye right here i tried to pull out my best max scherzer impression scherzer getting some work in the batting cage on tuesday attempting to lay down the bunt and then lays it down off his face yeah scherzer breaks his nose in the process and now he (laughs) that was lovely that was pretty painful but you know the best is by us and the mets have not done anything except sign minor league deals of like chase and shreve and travis jankowski but those are minor moves in free agency we got big fish to fry and we're gonna go through i got a list here of free agents and some trades that have happened so starting off the big 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 and, and one Nicholas, not to interrupt you but since monday <laughs> we're, yeah. we're talking about we're talking about three days yeah all, all this has happened yeah three days of chaos i mean i don't think baseball's been this exciting of like a Ooh. short span of like free agency forever i mean before the lockout we had a uh, like a span of like three days everybody signed i know black friday the mets signed like three dudes i mean that was super exciting and then within this week we just have uh, arguably more excitement oh, yeah. you know starting off i mean the biggest one probably of them all is what happened with Freddie Freeman. He goes to the Los Angeles Dodgers, the Giants rival. Oh, sorry. I just puked in my mouth. Uh, th- this is going to be a tough one for Giants fans. To, to It's going to be a tough pill to swallow. Th- there's just, there comes a point in time when you realize that you, uh, most, and, and, I, and I would say this about most of the league, and it doesn't mean that the Dodgers are going to win the World Series at all. Believe me, it doesn't. And I think the thing that we have to understand about this move is that it did take a series of events, of, of in a way, unfortunate events for this to happen. Uh, Freddie Freeman, before the lockout, really didn't, he didn't really get the, the sense. And you, were, you would have thought after winning the World Series and, you know, having raising your family in Atlanta that they would have, possibly come up with some sort of an agreement or, you know, possibly some sort of compromise, but it just didn't happen. And this was a real interesting one because we're going to get to this in a moment, but the Braves actually, before Freeman signed with the Dodgers, they already knew that it wasn't going to happen. And they went out and basically replaced him with a younger model in Matt Olson, who's younger 
and but and still ended up extending him to the same amount. It's basically they got a guy that's 20, I think he's 28 years old or 27 years old compared, or it might even be 26 years old compared to 32 years old, which is Freddie Freeman. So Freddie Freeman now definitely on the back end of his career, but again, going to a Dodger team with a lineup that is going to be extremely difficult to pitch to with Trey Turner, Justin Turner, Cody Bellinger, Mookie Betts. I mean, it just doesn't end. We're talking about three MVP, three to four MVP candidates. Not, not to mention they bring back Chris Taylor, and we'll get back to all this in a moment. Freddie Freeman is going to have major protection in the lineup. We already know he can pick it at first base. I think this is a great move for him. It, it, you really can't go wrong going to the Dodgers. Yeah, I mean, Freddie Freeman. First off, I'd like to say, as a Mets fan, I'm stoked for this. Freddie Freeman always killed the Mets. I mean, every time he just absolutely destroyed. As a baseball fan, I absolutely hate this. Because, I mean, the Dodgers, they have the best lineup in baseball. I mean, like, you talk about a matchup I want to see in the postseason, which we'll get to closer to when the season starts. We give our postseason picks. Dodgers and Mets, man, I want to watch the probably the best rotation of baseball battle the best lineup. That will be a series to watch. But, I mean, Freddie Freeman. And like you said, the Braves replaced him with Matt Olson. Um, so, the good thing about Olson, he's younger. He's basically the exact same. Lefty, uh, gold glover. Um, just And, you, like you said, same amount of contract. And the difference with this for the Braves is, Freddie Freeman is going to be uh, paid until his age 38 season. Matt Olson will be paid through his age uh, 35 season, and they have an option for a ninth year. And Freddie Freeman got 162 million over six years. Matt Olson got 168 uh, through eight years, including a 20 million option. So that could be through uh, 188 uh, through nine years. So the Braves, you know, they just couldn't wait any longer. And it's hard because we saw, uh, Alex and off, oh, I don't know how to say the GM's last name. Alex was, you know, almost in tears talking yeah. about, you know, having to bring over Matt Olson. Alex, have you ever had a move in your career that's had so much emotion wrapped nope. up in? Not even close. You keep saying that this is one of the toughest deals that you've had to make. It may be obvious because you keep talking about how many prospects you gave up. Is it anything beyond that, or is it because of? Yeah, that sure, but I, you know, I can't get into that. So, um, you know, it's tough deal. And, you know, it's, it was just hard for them. And I can argue to see it. You know, if DeGrom leaves next year, I'm be in the same exact position as you Braves fans are. Yeah. But, I mean, the future is bright. I mean, Matt Olson, you, you're right. I think money-wise, it's a lot better for you guys to look this way and help advance your team. And, you know, you guys, right after this, you know, you went out and you brought back Eddie Rosario. You know, you guys got uh, Alex Dickerson, former Giant, too. So, I mean, the Braves, once they moved on from Freddie, they're able to go through business. It's almost like they're waiting on Freddie here. And him going is almost like, okay, you know, this is a fresh start. And it'll be interesting to see what happens here. So, I mean, good luck, Braves. But at the same time, I hope you guys suck and just fall off a cliff because let's go Mets, baby. Another big trade we had, um, this one was unexpected, and it comes from the Reds team that is <laughs> a mess right now. Jesse Winker and Eugenio Suarez are heading over to Seattle. You're talking about two guys that can hit the ball out of the ballpark. Suarez has a, has a history of that. And Winker, I mean, this guy, he came on strong last year. Uh, I believe he had over 20 homers, maybe 20, 24 to 25 home runs. This guy... I was at the, you, how do I know? I always like to say this. How do I know? Because I was there. Remember, I was at the um, home run derby and I was at the all-star game. And I remember sitting out there in right field during batting practice and Winker was just absolutely tattooing the ball out of the ballpark down the right field line. So this guy is going to be, they have a short porch in Seattle down the right field line. So this guy is going to just absolutely kill the ball. And what more can I say about Seattle? They are starting, as, as the closer we get to the season, they are starting to look like they can really compete for that division title. And the, yeah. Reds, and the Reds, on the other hand, they just look like a fire sale. 
Oh, the Reds are a joke. Uh, they said they're not going to trade Luis Castillo or Tyler Molly. So that is – that's so, – I mean, you guys have some pitching next year, I suppose. But clear salary dump, dumping Eugenio Suarez. And, you know, they said they weren't going to make that mistake it's trading salary uh, for with prospects of Jeter Downs and some other dude that they traded the Dodgers back for uh, uh, Homer Bailey, I believe it was. But, I mean, the Mariners, we were talking about it last podcast. They are like one move, one signing away. And here they go out, get a third baseman, get a left fielder, both for, both all-stars. Eugenio Suarez was second in 2019 for the most home runs of baseball. Behind the one and only Pete Alonso, two-time home run derby winner. Had to get that one out there. But, I mean, you're adding two solidified power bats. Suarez production has been down the last two years. But that's because the Reds are a joke of a franchise, and they were playing him at shortstop. You move back to third base in Seattle. Of course, you have J.P. Crawford at short, and replacing Kyle Seeger, who retired, of course. And I think Suarez production is going to go right back up. Hitters Park, T-Mobile Park. Whew! I mean, this Seattle lineup, we'll talk to them in a moment. It is getting scary. A couple more signings to highlight. Zach Granke goes back to the Royals. It's interesting. The Royals are actually pushing towards um, getting getting some more pieces. Like they're almost at this window of Bobby Witt Jr. coming up and looks like they're ready to contend. They're uh, in discussions for Frankie Montas or Sean Manaya with the A's too. So mm -hmm. looks like the Royals, they're pushing to put a competitive team forward. And then I'll let you talk about this one. Jock Peterson going to the San Francisco Giants. I don't like it. I don't like it. I, I, there's, there isn't one part of that deal that I like. And I, I think that Jock Peterson is the kind of guy that is a great fit on a team like the Braves last year. It was a midseason pickup that, you know, you, you might – might need for some postseason at bats. And I'm not saying that the Giants aren't going to make the postseason, especially with this new format, because I, I do think that they can. Um, but Jock Peterson is not the kind of guy that you want to say, he is going to be our starting this. <laughs> he is going to be our starting that. And and I, with Chris Bryant leaving, which we'll talk about in a moment, I don't know, and, and you know, Mike Ostrimski had a bit of a down year last year. We'll see if that trend continues. Yes, you have some depth in the outfield with Austin Slater and Steven Duggar and, a, and Darren Ruff and a few other guys that they can plug in. But I have a feeling that this guy's going to get some, get some at-bats. Now, they will platoon like they have done, especially in the Farhan era. Uh, but I don't love this move. I, I, don't, I don't see a lot of motivation for him here. Um, I don't know if he's the kind of guy that's going to fit in in the Bay Area. I don't know if he'll fit in in the clubhouse. And I thought last year would have been better for them to, to get him, which they were talking about, and maybe giving him a, at least a two- or three-year contract. Uh, he started with the Cubs last year, started off real slow, got traded midseason, but obviously helped the Braves finish strong. Is he, is he a guy that, you know, can maybe get you a few home you know clutch homers here and there? Yeah, but – I don't know if he really fits this lineup or this team. Yeah, I mean, Jock Peterson, he's coming back to the Bay. He's from the Bay Area. His brother works at Stanford. So I've met him, by the way, when I went to the Stanford baseball game. Got another one here soon. So hopefully maybe get another one. Maybe we'll get a picture posted on the podcast for you guys. But, I mean, Jock Peterson, power-hitting lefty, went to the Braves last year, is a winning player. You talk about bringing winning players over to teams. I feel like Jock is, is exactly that. Been with the Dodgers. You know, helped bring the lead, uh, bring the Braves back to and win the World Series last year. You know, Jocktober, he wears the pearls. So obviously that's something to highlight. It'll be interesting to see what the Giants do, because I feel like this signing will work if you go out and get another corner outfielder like uh, Conforto Castellanos, who are still on the free agent market. And who uh, we have a couple more people to talk about here. Uh, two, two signings and another trade. Kyle Schwarber is one that I feel like would fit in anywhere like the Giants. And he went to the Philadelphia Phillies. It's going to be a great fit. Um, you want to talk about a short porch <laughs> in right field. Uh, th this guy, he, wherever he goes, he contributes, you know, he, he, he goes to the nationals. He contributes, you know, obviously everything that he did with the Cubbies, he contributes. He has been, you know, a constant, um, 
cons- very consistent player. And for the Phillies, you know, he fits perfectly because they like to, you know, mash. That's what they like to do. Uh, the only thing with him is injuries. You know, he's, he's come off a number of different injuries over the course of his career. And, you know, they gave him a pretty decent contract here. So they're, what they're hoping for is that he can uh, kind of rekindle, I think, the, the career path that the Cubs thought he could have, which would be, you know, an everyday player. He hasn't really been an everyday player for the last few years. So we'll see how it goes. The Phillies have been historically known to take chances on guys that can mash um, you know, may not have may not have a spot defensively on the field, but he can hit the ball. And, um, I think I think he'll be a perfect fit, uh, especially a lot of you know power right-handed arms in the in the National League East should be good. Yeah, and I as a Mets fan absolutely hate this move. Kyle Schwarber, I remember he hit like seven home runs in like a series of five games against the Mets. Holy cow, he kills the Mets. And I was so happy when Washington traded him. And then he's back in the NLEs for the next four years. And I have to watch him and Reese Hoskins and Bryce Harper and JT Real Muto. Yeah. All these guys just absolutely bang box the Mets. But again, the Mets have a great pitching staff. So probably not going to happen because all these guys, they're all prone to the strikeout. So, I mean, the, the Phillies are like a full-in, all-or-nothing, hit-or-miss kind of team right now. I feel like Schwarber, that signifies that. And hopefully that brings them out of the running for Michael Conforto because as a Mets fan, I already had to go watch Zach Wheeler dominate, you know, former Met. I don't want to watch Conforto do that either. <laughs> okay, so we'll talk about one of the more confusing things last. But another big trade that happened, a, a part of the A's fire sale, Matt Chapman is going to the Blue Jays for another handful of prospects. Yeah, prospects that, you know, you can't even, you wouldn't even want to name a guy named Gunner or something and another guy. I mean, these, the, the guys that came back in this deal, they're just, you know, I mean, I know what the A's have done all year after year after year. And luckily, the last few years has been where the players have actually been on the roster and you see the rebuild actually come into fruition with Matt Olson and Sean Murphy and Matt Chapman and Ramon Laureano and Sean Manaya And, you know, these young up and coming guys, they're all going to be gone. And they've already shown, obviously with Olson, they've shown their hand and the blue Jays just, man, they, they stomp right in. I believe it's their fourth, ninth, and even a non-rated prospect in their organization that they give up. Who cares about prospects? Uh, there's a, there's a there's a saying that goes along in baseball. It's been it's been the same saying for years to come. Prospects are prospects, and all stars are all stars. You don't know what's going to happen with prospects. You don't know how they're going to turn out. It's about a 38 30 70 proposition in favor of you of uh, that player becoming an all-star half of the time or even more than 50 percent of the time they do make the roster but they just end up being a fringe player you know like uh you know i mean look at a guy like evan longoria uh, and i and again i'm just saying great career but is is evan longoria you know is he the kind of guy that you would really like trade the house for i i just don't you know, and that's what that's what you're getting back. Now, if you're getting back a guy like Juan Soto, okay, yeah. But generally, those guys come, they're generational. You don't see them very often. And a lot of those guys are coming from the international drafts now. So I don't understand this move for the A's. It doesn't make any sense. They could have waited. They could have seen how the year started. Maybe, you know, trade them at the deadline. You know, maybe when teams are more desperate, but they didn't even get a great package for this guy. And the Blue Jays, oh, my word. Oh, boy, I'm going to talk about them later. They are now literally a lock to make the playoffs, in my mind. And I'm when I say lock, I mean, like, put a lock on it. Put the noise on, you know, go to YouTube um, sound effects and get that lock sound. They will make the postseason. Maybe not a division winner, but they will make the postseason. Yeah, I mean, the Blue Jays, like we said with the Mariners, one move away, they get all-star, gold glove, 
oh, third baseman, Matt player. Chapman. That infield is crazy. You got Vladdy at first, Kevin Biggio at second, Bo Bichette at short, oh. and Matt Chapman at third. You got Teoscar Hernandez, George Springer. Oh, I mean, this great. outfield, Randall Gritchick. I mean, th- this team is absolutely insane. Barrios, uh, Hinjin Ryu. Uh, yeah, it's, it, it, it's just crazy what this team has done, and they're young. They're going to go out, and they are going to push everything forward. And, oh, keep in mind, the last time uh, back in 2015, I believe it was, when the A's traded a third baseman to the Blue Jays, he won MVP. Donaldson. So – if the Blue Jays have this thing and this knack for getting third baseman from the A's and turning them into MVP players, this trade is going to look good. Again, like you said, the prospects, not much for uh, Matt, uh, for Matt Chapman. Matt Olson got Shea Langerius and Christian Pache, like the one and two prospects in the Braves organization. So, I mean, that's some, that's a good return for Olson, but Chapman, it's just a bunch of names, Gunnar Hogland, like that's the best highest rated pitcher. And he's like the eighth in the A's organization. So I don't see it. It doesn't, doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Yep. And another deal that doesn't make a lot of sense, final uh, free agent move, Chris Bryant went to the Rockies. <laughs> you know, I, I, I'm not going to waste too much time on this one. Uh, all I'm going to say is he's a Scott Boris client. Yeah. And, you know what, and you know what Scott Boris clients do? They don't even negotiate. Scott Boris does all the negotiating. And he obviously was looking for the money and the years. And you know what? I don't blame him. Go. I didn't like this guy for the Giants last year. I was not a huge fan. I mean, yeah, it would have been nice if they resigned him just to have some depth. But honestly, he really wasn't that great defensively. I mentioned that the other day. You know, he just kind of kind of booted the ball around and threw the ball all over the place. Couldn't even throw from third to first. The Giants are going to be fine without him. And to be honest with you, the rest of the league is going to be fine without this guy. He's been declining year after year. Yeah, he hit about 26 bombs last year, hit about 260. His on-base percentage is pretty good. He's got a good eye up there. He'll hit the ball out of the ballpark in Colorado, but Colorado's going to be terrible this year. So, eh. They traded Nolan Arenado and $50 million to the Cardinals just to sign Chris Bryant. (sighs) The Rockies... They're a joke of a franchise. They are. They are. They are like the um, the uncle that comes to your house every Thanksgiving, and you think he's not going to be crazy anymore the next year because he's crazy. But he comes every year to your house for Thanksgiving, and he's still crazy. The Rockies they never change. They never learn. When are they going to realize that they should invest in pitching? in their bullpen, in speed, you know, they're, they're just not, they're, they're not going to win by, you know, signing retreads. It's just not going to happen. A team, you know, a team like the Giants, a team like the Red Sox, a team like the Yankees, a team like the Mets would have been a great fit for Brian. The, the Rockies? Eh. Good luck. <laughs> I mean... Uh, it makes zero sense. Like the, the good Rock, for him. good for him and his family. Yeah, I mean, good for Chris, but like, yeah. this team's not going to go anywhere. I mean, they have a joke of a front office. Front office, they like, oh, we're not going to trade John Gray, so we give him the qualifying offer. Didn't even give him the qualifying offer. So whoop de do. Good job, Rockies, man. You guys got your guy. Have fun losing they, the next seven. They hosted games. the. It was a great stadium. I got to go last year, and they hosted the All Star Game. I got to watch Pete Alonso hit bombs. Yeah. I enjoyed my time in Denver. <laughs> yeah, but hopefully Chris Bryant enjoys it just as much as you. I mean, I guess you can if you're if you're making that much money. But hey, I will say this: beautiful women in Denver, and I am a married man, and so is he. <laughs> But I can still say beautiful women in Denver. I'll leave it at that. <laughs> All right. <laughs> On that note, we're, uh, Drew's going to highlight uh, the playoffs and what's to come with that, along with the rules that uh, you're, you should come to expect, because I know we're all confused about the playoffs. All right. So I'll, I'll make this quick. There will be a new system, a new playoff system this year in Major League Baseball. So whoop de doo uh, but it is, it is kind of intriguing because it's 
it's it's similar to what we saw in the pandemic season two years ago. And I remember on this very show, you and I talking about how exciting those three game series were. Uh, they were the only thing I didn't like about them is they were in one ballpark. They were in one city. But it it gave it really did make for an interesting series because if the home team lost the first game, they were already behind the eight ball. So let me explain it to you. It's a new 12 team system. There will be the, there will basically be six teams per uh, league. In each league, there will be the top two division winners with the best record in each league. So the two division winners with the best record in each league, that's two out of the three, will earn first round buys, which means they won't have to play in that first round. That was different than what we saw a few years ago. All the teams played in the three game series. That this time, if your Mets end up winning 105 games, which is very possible, then they don't have to play that first round of those wild card games. They can sit back, relax, say what you want about that, because in baseball, we have seen that that waiting period can actually make your team rusty going into the playoffs. But anyway, they'll get the buys. And then the third division team, division winner that didn't have, that was the third best division winner. They will be joined by the top three non-division winners. So basically, uh, other than the three division winners, you will see three additional wildcard teams. So three plus three. So that means you hypothetically, you could see four playoff teams from one division. <laughs> it is very possible. So you could see one division winner and you could see three wild card winners and then you'd have the other two division winners. Or you could see three division winners, two be in the top level, one having the buy, uh, two having the buy, one playing, and then you could have those additional three teams be from each division. So you could have one from the East, one from the West, uh, Central, and one from the West. So just to give you an example from last year, okay, if you want to just go back to last year, in the American League, the Tampa Bay Rays and the Houston Astros would have earned first round buys because they were the top two division winners. The White Sox were the third division winner that weren't the greatest, uh, that had the least best record of the division winners. They would have hosted the Blue Jays who ended up missing the playoffs, right? Remember that? It would have been the White Sox hosting the Blue Jays and the Red Sox hosting the Yankees. So pardon me there, because it's, it, and you can see that this could be confusing. In the National League, the San Francisco Giants <laughs> would have had the best record. They were a division winner, right? So they would have gotten a bye. The Brewers were the second best division winner that got a bye. And then again, because if you don't win the division, you're in that other, you're looped into those other teams. The, the uh, Brewers and Giants would have had buys. The Braves would have hosted the Reds and the Dodgers would have hosted the Cardinals. So as we start, uh, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, as we start to uh, preview our divisions, we are going to be not only talking about division winners, but we will also be mentioning three other teams in the other divisions that could make the postseason. Hopefully that wasn't too confusing. Yeah, that made sense to me. Uh, a lot more sense. So not just two teams from every league or every yeah. division. So it's just three other teams. So like you said, four, it could be four from one division. So you have a really competitive, right. you know, for example, for football, uh, uh, Devonta Adams got traded to the Raiders today. So you could have all four teams, the Broncos, the Chargers, the Raiders, and the Chiefs all make the playoffs. So say the Dolphins would miss out. Just say we threw them in there hypothetically because they're yeah. out on Deshaun Watson. There's an example for you. So, with that being said, on to division preview, starting off with the AL East. I'm, I'm going to really just focus on, you know, the teams that I feel are the contenders. And I'm going to start with the Blue Jays. <laughs> I mean, I got I to gotta be brutally honest, man. These Blue Jays are for real. Hyunjin Ryu, Jose Barrios, Kevin Gosman. And then when you look at the bullpen, Jordan Romano, I mean, Yimi Garcia. This team, they've got it all. And then, you know, guys that can come out of the pen and give you long innings like Ross Stripling. In their lineup, I mean, it's just, you just can't beat it. You know, Vlad, Biggio, Chapman, Bichette, 
Guriel Jr., Springer, Gritchick, Hernandez. This team is really for real. I mean, they are, to me, they are, they, and they, they may end up being the favorite, even beyond the Tampa Bay Rays, who I know, and believe it or not, they were in the running for Freddie Freeman. I heard some reports that they were looking at Freddie Freeman. And I, I was thinking to myself, who was running the Rays organization this week? Because they don't usually offer anything more than a year or two. But apparently they were in on him. But these Blue Jays are for real, man. I mean, on, on top of the – other than the Blue Jays, obviously the Yankees and the Rays, you know, the Red Sox maybe have a chance. But I'm going to go ahead and say that not only are the Blue Jays a lock to make the playoffs, I think that they fight for the division till the very last weekend. They are that good. I mean, the Blue Jays, I believe they won 89 games last year. Nine, yeah. No. The Blue Jays won 91 games last year. Fell a game short. One game short. The Mariners fell two games short. The Blue Jays, I mean, so what do they do? Win 91 games? Oh, we're going to go out, you know, we're going to just make our team even better. And I and keep in mind, this team is really, really young. What do young teams do? They get better. So you got to build on it. They, they imagine 91 games. This team with the upgrades can easily win 100 games this year. And to me, they're the, they're my favorites to win this division. I'm putting them over the Yankees who kind of haven't had a very good off season. They brought back Rizzo. They traded for Josh Donaldson. You know, they, they haven't really made very big impact moves. The Red Sox, I think they've gotten probably worse traded to Hunter Renfro lost Kyle Schwarber. Chris sale has a fractured rib. He's going to be out part of the season. So I don't think the Red Sox would be competitive. The Red Sox were a surprise team last year. And then the Rays, you know, they, they, they added some guys. They lost some guys. They lost Colin McHugh, but they're a pitching factory. They brought in Corey Kluber. So the Rays, they're always a team I think now, the Moneyball 2.0. So I think my looking at this division, oh, by the way, the Orioles, good, good luck winning 60 games with Adley Rutschman. Hopefully and, and- he does good. And not to not to give a shout out to John Boy Media, who I know they they beat our brains in with viewers, um, but they do some funny, funny, funny stuff on the Orioles. They 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 like show if you want to see the Orioles how how to ruin an inning defensively, go watch John Boy Media. Anyway, oh, so funny, but yeah. So like I said, I think Blue Jays number one team in this division, followed by the Rays, followed by Yankees, Red Sox, and then the Orioles. Hopefully, Adley Rushman comes back from this tricep train. Moving on to the AL Central, another interesting division. So I like the White Sox in this division, but I'm going to focus on a team that I think is going to be very dangerous this year, and that is the Detroit Tigers. I think when you look at picking up Eduardo Rodriguez, Spencer Turnbull coming back, uh, you know, looking at Soto as the closer, a pretty decent bullpen, and then Again, the, the acquisitions, Tucker Barnhart, bringing back Jonathan Scope, Miguel Cabrera, obviously old. But then, you know, I mean, this team, Javi Baez, will they go out and get, um, you know, are they, are they going to go get my guy? What's his name? Come Carlos Correa. I'm losing. This is age, bro. This is age right here. And I mean, if they go out and get Carlos Correa, okay, this team is legit in a division with, other than the White Sox, do you trust the Guardians? Do you trust the Royals? Do you trust the Twins? Hell no. I don't. I, I think they are seriously I, – I don't think those teams are even going to compete. And there's one guy that I want to focus on, and I love this guy. And I saw him play in person last year in Anaheim. I went down there for a series. I think I sent you a picture. His name is Akil Badu. This guy – Oh my God, he is so talented. This guy in center field, he is going to be a star. Badu, oh my God, voodoo. This guy can play, okay? Seriously. They've got veterans. They've got guys like Robbie Grossman. This team, they're legit. Are they going to make the playoffs? I don't know. But I think they're going to compete for one of those wild cards or those whatever those other spots are. Yeah, I mean, AL Central, I think the White Sox, like I predicted a couple of years ago, I predicted them to beat the A's in the postseason and the COVID season, but 
that didn't really go to well. I've been a White Sox believer. 93 wins. They've gotten better. They're, they they're, lost Rodon. Yeah, they lost Rodon, but I feel like arguably with they're, they're bringing in more pieces. The, the eight, the, like I said, young teams get better. They build upon it it's themselves. They are going to be better. So the White Sox, they're locked to win the division for me. Followed by the Tigers, like you said, very, very young. I don't feel like the Guardians, I, they have a really strong pitching staff. But they're a team that's kind of floating in the middle of nowhere right now. Like you have a team that's going to be 500. If if I had to go all of baseball and say name a 500 team, it's the Guardians. Mm-hmm. I mean, they have a good pitching staff. They have no offense. Pitching wins games in my eyes. And they have a stupid opinion. name. They're not going to win. <laughs> yeah, new name of course. Yeah. So I feel like they're a 500 team. They they didn't do much this off season. They didn't get better. They didn't really get worse. So you know, Guardians third. The Royals, like I said, they're just still not competitive yet. I think two years, that, that's their time to shine. And the Twins, I don't, I can't get a read for what the Twins are doing. They tore it down. So good job getting fifth place. Someone had to do it. On to the AL West, a pretty competitive division with a lot of youngsters. It's a great division. Uh, the A's have made it a worse division now. <laughs> so, and the Angels are the Angels until otherwise noted, um, unfortunately for them. I mean, Shohei, of course, amazing. Uh, I'm going to focus on the Mariners, and and I know that they're the uh, they're kind of the uh, popular pick, but I usually don't believe in momentum. I'm not a big momentum in baseball kind of guy. Like I don't I don't really believe in it. I, I don't think things carry over generally in baseball. Uh, I think I, I do believe in momentum within a season. Uh, I, I believe in teams getting on a roll. I believe in, uh, you know, the trade deadline and bringing in a, a guy to kind of like boost your team. I, I believe in that. But generally, I don't believe in momentum from year to year. Well, this year I do. I, I, do, I, I think, and I think with this Mariner team, you know, obviously a young roster, but with some talent, Marco Gonzalez, Chris Flexen, Logan Gilbert, and then looking at their lineup, I mean, this team can rake the ball. Ty France, Toro, Moore. Now you bring in Suarez. Now you bring in Winker. And then young guys like Kellenic, Lewis, and Jared Kellenic. Is it Kellenic or Kellenic? Kellenic. Kellenic is going to be a star. This guy, you know, he came in. Yeah, he was supposed to be, you know, great right out of the bat. Well, it doesn't always happen that way. But as the year went on, you could tell he was getting more and more comfortable up there. And this is the kind of guy that basically replaces Kyle Seager. You know, I mean, yeah, he's a center fielder, but this is the kind of guy that is going to be mashing the ball for years to come in the right field. I, and then, and then the last but not least, Mitch Hanniger, a guy that was Mr. Clutch last year. So every clutch hit, even down the stretch, this guy was just nails. This is a team that is going there. They always get off to a good start. Also, they always get off to a good start, even in years where they crumble. Well, this is the year they get off to a good start and they keep it going. And I believe that it will be a two team race coming down the stretch with the Mariners and the Astros. And I think the Mariners win the division. That's my bold pick. Yeah, so I mean the Astros, they arguably they've they they've kind of hovered. I think they've definitely the Astros have gotten better. They got Verlander; he's gonna be back healthy this year. If they bring back Correa. I definitely think they're gonna be favorites to win the division. They're probably gonna be my pick. But the Mariners, man, you talk about a team. They lost Kyle Seeker; he retired. But you bring in these Suarez and Winker. You bring in these veteran guys. You bring Robbie Ray. He's gonna man the rotation. You have these guys that are going to lead this team. And I mean, all the, you just, you need veteran leadership. And that was kind of what this mismatched team, the Mariners last year down the stretch, they reminded me a lot about the Rays. I look at their lineup and be like, huh, how do they have 90 wins? And they are just tough, gritty. They fight to the end. I mean, they were two games away from making the playoffs. 
So this team, like I said, too, very, very young. What do young teams do? They get better. The more experienced, the better they get. Oh, by the way, they have the number uh, three prospect in all of baseball. Julio Rodriguez expected to come up this year and make his major league debut. So, I mean, this team is seriously, seriously dangerous. I think the A's, they're trading everyone. Good luck being not last in the division. The Rangers, of course, they made a lot of moves. You know, uh, the $500 million infield, by the way, um, along with John Gray. The Angels, they I think the Angels are in a spot where they can get third place in the division. I feel like the Angels can finally be above 500 if everyone stays healthy. They've got, they brought in like four relievers this last week. So, I mean, the Angels are finally investing money in pitching. So, I mean, they're, they're in a spot. You know, you know Syndergaard's going to get hurt. That's oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Syndergaard will get hurt, but they brought in like Ryan Tapera, uh, someone else. But, I mean, these are quality pitching guys that they're bringing in. So, I think the Angels, good job. Third place is my pick for you guys. Don't disappoint me. And they, right. and, they, and they may catch one of those well, um, one of those playoff spots. Yeah, Although I, mean, I doubt it. I, I have a I have a strange feeling, not strange feeling, almost certain feeling that um, the AL East is going to produce at least three playoff teams, <laughs> if not four. I, I think you could see Toronto, the Yankees, the Red Sox, and the Rays. And what that mean? What does that mean for the rest of the league? That means. White Sox, most likely, maybe the Tigers, and then Houston or Seattle. Yeah. If, if it was in the National League, maybe, maybe we'd be talking because we'll get to that in a moment. Yeah. I mean, you look at those leagues, it's kind of like the NBA right now. The, the second place Warriors would be easily first place in the AL or in the, uh, in the don't Eastern talk about Conference. Them. Curry got hurt last night. I don't want Yeah. To that's true. That's true. He'll be but, back to the playoffs, but yeesh. Yeah. So, it, this shirt's fading as I'm wearing it right now. <laughs> yeah, so moving on to my favorite division, of course, Houses of the Mets, the NL East. So, so I, I want to be clear to everyone out there, especially you homers that think Nicholas is cool. <laughs> the Mets will make the playoffs. Okay? They, will get, they will get one of those spots, but it ain't going to be the division because when you think about World Series winning teams, okay? Let's think back to World Series winning teams. Let's go back a few years ago, the Nationals. I'm not going to talk about the Dodgers because they didn't even count. To me, they were an asterisk. Let's go back to, to uh, 2019, the Nationals, okay? Let's go to the year before, the Red Sox. Who won it in 2017? Do you even remember, Nicholas? Astros. Okay. Who won it the year before that? Uh, 2016, it was the Cubs. Okay. Generally, generally, the Astros may have been the exception because they did get back to the World Series the next year. Actually, they, they had to wait a year to get back. Most World Series teams take a step down the following year. And the reason why is because, A, they lose players. B, they have what's called a World Series hangover. And C, you just don't get the same luck that you get when you win a World Series. Baseball is one of those sports you need some luck. I, I'm willing to say that the Giants had a lot of luck, even though they won three World Series in five years. It was, a, it was like a perfect storm, you know, winning those World Series. It, we, whatever it may have been, it was. Well, who won the World Series last year, Nicholas? The Atlanta Braves. The Atlanta Braves. And as I look at the Atlanta Braves roster, they literally lost one guy, <laughs> Freddie Freeman. And maybe one guy, Jorge Soler, who hasn't signed yet. Jack Peterson. Jack Peterson, give me a break, okay? He wasn't even, like, in their lineup on a daily basis. He would come in and pinch it. And, yeah, he did do some things, okay? But for the most part, who were the guys that really made a difference last year? Max Fried, Ian Anderson, Charlie Morton, who's back, Will Smith, Tyler Matzik. Okay, they bring in Colin McHugh. We were talking about him the other day. Travis Darno, Ozzie Albies. How about a guy named Austin Riley? 
How about a guy named Dansby Swanson? How about a guy named Adam Duvall? How about a guy named Eddie Rosario who came back? How about a guy named Marcel Ozuna who barely did much? And last but not least, how about this guy, Matt Olson, that they brought in? Wow, he's a pretty good player. And then there's one more guy. Two more what? guys I'd like to say. Mike yeah. Soroka. But there's, but there's really, there's one more guy that I want to talk about who wasn't even there. And he's their best player, Ronald Acuna Jr. This team is going to win the division. And the Mets are going to go through injury after injury after injury as they roll in on their wheelchairs like a geriatric convention. Max Scherzer's arm is, might as well fall off by the All-Star break, okay? They are not meant to last. They are not built to last. Will they make the postseason? Yes, because they literally bought every single player that was available to them. Thank you, Steve Cohen. But they are not winning the division, and they are not getting out of that stupid wild card round. Okay, I rest my case. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was—I've been waiting for that all day. By the way. All right. Well, <laughs> the Atlanta Braves—they did it all without. Their, well, I would say their best pitcher, uh, second in Rookie of the Year voting behind uh, Pete Alonso in 2019, by the way, Mike Soroka, torn AC or Achilles, and then had to, had to redo that. So arguably their best pitcher, which is why I interrupted Drew, of course, because I feel like he has just as much of an impact as Ronald Acuna Jr. does. Now, when I look at this division, without bias, what I see out of this division is exactly what we saw out of the NL West last year with the Giants and Dodgers battling it out all season long, being separated within like three games. That's what I see with this division. It's going to be tough. It's going to be competitive. If, and there's always an if, the Mets can manage to stay healthy. But God, because the Mets, I mean, you go through last the last couple of years, they're always injured and Dude, I mean, okay, the good thing about the Mets, they have an all-new coaching staff. I think uh, their pitching coach, Jeremy Hefner, is the only player to retain or coach to retain. So hopefully they got, like, new injury staff because, holy crap, they need it. The Phillies, um, good job getting Kyle Schwerber. You guys, another, like, 500 team. I think hopefully the Marlins can step, uh, step up a bit and grow, and you guys can become the fourth-place Phillies again. But, again, Braves and Mets, one, two, very lots of wins, hundred plus wins, both teams. No, it's a great division. You're wrong. I don't usually argue with you, but you're wrong. I my my take on this is that the Mets are going to be battling the Phillies for second place more than they're battling the Braves for first place. And you'll see as the season goes on, as the Mets and Phillies both have 81 victories on September 19th, and it comes down to a few three game series at the end of the season probably head to head and the Mets literally will roll out on their wheelchairs and have nothing left in the tank. And I don't, I think you're delusional. I don't think this team is going to win hundred games. I think they're going to limp towards 85 to 90, to be honest with you. Yeah. I mean, everyone said the same thing in 2015, 2016, and the Mets made it to the world series and then just blew up on themselves. That's when they ran out of gas. So the Mets, I'm, I, if, the, if they're healthy, of course, this is what I say. But the Mets, they, they, they have right. something up their sleeve. I, 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 I'll be ready. End of the year recap. We'll be going back to this, and we will see who's right, and we will settle it once and for all. And we'll, and we'll settle this on our um, maybe next show when we actually do our playoff picks and World Series winner. And you can put your money where your mouth is because guess what? You ever seen Skip and Shannon Undisputed on Fox? It's a debate show. They bet. They bet Diet Mountain Dew. But you and I are going to make a wager on this. Okay? All right. Yeah, I mean, I'm well, again, frisky. again b- before the season starts, we will see where, you know, you know it, it, we'll, we'll see how much of a Mets bias I have by then. 
Yeah. All right. To get this controversy out of the way, let's talk to a, a, probably the, the worst division in the National League, the NL Central. Well, and it's the easiest one to pick. It's the Brewers division, uh, and it's not even close. It's just – the Cubs are going to be a little better than they were last year just because of some of their recent pickups. You know, getting Suzuki was a big one, and you didn't even mention that, by the way. Oh, yeah. Um, so, I mean, he, that was a huge pickup for them. I don't know – how he's going to fit into Chicago and all of that and with, with Japanese and Korean players. It's just, you never really know what's going to happen. Uh, but this one apparently is a good, he's a good one. He's, you know, six time all-star four time gold Glover. So the guy, you know, has power. So we'll see, but I mean, I got, I got two words for you, Woodruff and Burns. <laughs> I need, I say more. And, and then, you know, hater, I mean, just he's just incredible. Uh, you know, Devin Williams. I mean, th- this this team is just stacked. And then when you look at young guys like Keston Hura, Peterson, Wong, I mean, it just goes on and on and on. Willie Adamas, who showed he was clutch last year. They bring in Kutch, you know, uh, hopefully a healthy Christian Yelich, hopefully a healthy Lorenzo Cain. These guys are just going to, not only are they going to mash, you know, I mean, guy, guys like Rudy Telez is, or Rowdy Telez is just going to be, you know, absolutely mashing the baseball. But this team, they, they're just, they're basically just going to coast. So you watch, they're going to be up 11 games in September. They're going to be able to rest up again. And this year, I think, I think the Brewers have, a, they, now they should have a chance to get to the World Series. I really do. I think they've got the rotation. I don't think that they're just going to sit, stand pat. I think they will go out and make some moves like they did last year. But this year, they may make some impact moves. Hell, you never know what's going to happen. The Mets may be out of it by the all-star, by the trade deadline, and they may get Scherzer. Stranger things have happened. Trust me. A lot of people didn't think Scherzer would end up in L.A. last year, but he did. I could see that happening. The Brewers coast this division. Uh, I think the Cardinals take a step back this year. I think the Pirates are the Pirates. And I think the Reds are a fire sale. Yeah, I mean, I can name a better one, too, in baseball b- besides Woodruff and Burns. But again, they Good luck. NL the ground treasure. Um, the, but Good again, Burns. Good is the, luck, bro. These guys are these guys are legit. Hey. I've been on the Woodruff hype train, uh, fantasy leagues. I'm always, always drafting Woodruff. It always pays off for me, by the way. I made sure to trade for him on my freshman year, and he helped me win 19. Go 19 and 1, by the way. Um, again, Brewers are winning the division. Again, we forgot to mention a impact player last year that helped the Red Sox get as far as they did. Hunter Renfro, who came from the Rays. Again, I think he's a solid. He, he's, he's been in that winning culture. So I think Renfro is definitely going to help the Brewers out. Uh, they got rid of Jackie Bradley Jr. And they have some money to spend. And it'll be interesting to see what they do. The Cardinals, uh, you say take a step back. I don't think the Cardinals really lost anyone. They added Steven Matz. They brought back Wainwright. They brought back Yadier Molina for, I believe, one final season. So it'll be interesting. The Cardinals, 91 team last year. So I think some of that was luck. So Cardinals, I think they, they can be a lock for second. The Reds fire sale. I mean, who's going to be worse this year? The Reds or the Pirates? And then the Cubs, you know, Seiya Suzuki, who completely flew, flew under my radar. I forgot he even signed, you know, as did half of the other people that have signed. But uh, and Marcus Stroman, uh, Andrelton Simmons. So, I mean, uh, Robert Gesellman and Jonathan VR, by the way, two former Mets going to the Cubs. So along with Stroman, so there's three. But it'll be interesting to see what happens in this division. It's kind of lame. It's kind of be the worst division in the National League. But, hey, I mean, Brewers, like you said, they are going to have a shot because they're going to easily, easily coast this division. Moving on to the final division, the one that holds – houses your favorite team, the NL West. Yeah, and, and I, I, I am very, very not only um, happy but very fortunate uh, to hear the new playoff format because I think – I think this is going to be a lock um, that you'll see the Giants and Dodgers in the postseason this year. Again, uh, I did not think the Giants would have made the postseason as is last year, this coming year. Uh, 
I want to talk about a few guys that fly under the radar. Uh, and I, and I think it's fair enough. I, I hope you're okay with me just saying, not even mentioning the Diamondbacks and Rockies, because I think they just suck. Um, and, and the, the Diamondbacks may be better. Eh, the Rockies are probably going to digress. So I, there's going to, the other thing that's nice about this division for the Giants and the Dodgers and the Padres really is that there's a lot of wins on the table when you talk about the Diamondbacks and the Rockies, which is one of the reasons why the Giants won the division last year is because they went some unthinkable number against the Diamondbacks, like 18 and one, or so, I don't know what it was, eight, 17 and two or something like that. It was crazy. Uh, I was at a lot of those games, by the way. I want to talk about a few guys that fly under the radar, okay? Uh, just on the Giants. First guy. Th this guy is, is a name that a lot of people may not know, but I think he may be a, a really important member of this team. His name's Sammy Long. Sammy Long came up last year in a year that the Giants were successful. They were winning games. And he basically became the spot starter for the team when they went through their injuries, when, when Logan Webb was struggling early in the year, and then when DiScofani went down, and then when Wood went down. They, you know, and then when Gosman had his struggles also. So that's one guy I want to mention. He may end up fifth, he may end up the fifth starter at some point this year and, and beyond. He's that good. He's, he's not only a left-handed pitcher, he's got great stuff. He's got a great curveball, but he can throw gas, okay? There's another guy that I want to mention that he, he goes under the radar year after year after year after year. His name is Wilmer Flores. Wilmer Flores is as clutch as you can get. And I know you love him because you used to have him. And the famous crying when he thought he was traded and all that with the Mets. But that guy is clutch, man. And he's coming back a very unheralded signing before that he comes back because, and the reason why he's so important is because Evan Longoria will get hurt. It is a mathematical certainty. So when, and it's not if, when, I'm sorry, not when, not if, when Evan Longoria gets hurt, Wilmer Flores basically just takes over and you don't even miss a beat. You bring back Brandon Belt, you bring back Lamont Wade Jr., you still have Tommy LaStella, Donovan Solano, see you later, who cares? And then, you know, Mike Yastrzemski, Austin Slater, Darren Ruff, Steven Duggar, Lamont Wade Jr., Mr. Clutch. And then last but not least, the guy that everybody wants to see this year, Joey Bart. What is Joey Bart going to look like? Well, Joey Bart is massive. He's 6'2", 238. He's strong. He's got a great stroke to the opposite field. If this guy can just get some confidence in himself, if he can learn how to catch a ball game, when you have starters like Alex Wood, Carlos Rodon, Logan Webb as the ace, Anthony DiSclefani, and then a bullpen, Camilo Duvall, this guy is going to be a beast. You've got left-handers, Harlan Garcia, Jose Alvarez, Jake McGee. You've got right-handers, Dominic Leon, Zach Littell, Kervin Castro, Tyler Rogers, the little underarm. This is going to be a team that really shouldn't miss a beat. There's no reason to think why this team doesn't win 90 games in their sleep. 90 games in their sleep. They're in an easy, fairly easy division. The Padres are banged up. Tatis, obviously, is going to be a huge blow to them. They don't know what they're going to do with Eric Hosmer. They think he may be on the trading block. They don't know what they're going to get from their pitchers that are coming back. And the Dodgers are the Dodgers. The Dodgers are going to also win probably 100 games in their sleep. Okay, that's a given. Don't compete with the Dodgers. Just get into the tournament and see what happens in a short series especially if you can get home field in that three game series. So because of that, because I think the East is going to be worse than a lot of people think, like literally it could be one team in the East. It could be just the Braves. It might be the Mets, but, but even if it is the Braves and the Mets, where does that leave you? It leaves you with the Mets, the Braves, the Brewers, the Dodgers, 
And guess what? There's two more spots. One of those may end up being the Cardinals. Okay. The Cardinals are always competitive. It could be the Cubs. Maybe the Cubs have this great year. Maybe it's the Phillies. But I don't see a, a mathematical equation that the Giants don't make the playoffs this year. Tell me if I'm wrong. Yeah, I totally agree. Because the Giants, somehow they got Gabe Kapler to be the greatest manager ever, by the way. I mean, he he, he was a just nightmare in Philadelphia. He went to the bullpen when nobody warmed up. Yeah. And somehow he goes out wins a division, beats out the Dodgers for the first time in eight years, 107 wins. There's mismatching players all around. Utility is key. I mean, the Giants, you know, they do, they just deploy that same formula. And like you said, they're going to be in the playoffs. I mean, the Giants were a great surprise. I don't think anyone saw them doing this last year. And they're not done. They're not done. They, they may go out and get Nick Castellanos. They may go out and get Carlos Correa, which I don't think is going to happen. They may go out and get Trevor Story. They're not done. Now, could other teams in the division also pick these guys up? Yes, they could. But for the most part, we're pretty sure that Trevor Story is leaving um, the Rockies. I don't think they're going to – I don't think they just signed Chris Bryant and are going to bring back Trevor Story. Maybe the Giants get Trevor Story at a discount, although he is a Scott Boris client. But maybe they do. Yeah, so I mean, it, 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 this is going to be really, really, really interesting to see. Again, the Dodgers, I mean, they just got somehow managed to get better, but like at the same time, they got worse. They lost Scherzer, they lost uh, Seeger, but they get Freddie Freeman and they get uh, like Dustin May back, and Kershaw is going to be healthy this postseason. Oh, the Dodgers are going to be absolutely outstanding this year the Dodgers are the Dodgers man like what are you saying but but keep in mind when we give our preview they there is a new postseason format so but they they're most likely going to get a buy because the Dodgers the Dodgers they're going to win 100 something years so they're going to find a way to blow it because they're the Dodgers but the Padres too we don't know what's going to happen out of them they're they're always a hot pick to you know do good Tatis had wrist surgery because he'd gotten multiple motorcycle accidents. A reporter asked him uh, what, uh, uh, like, how he hurt his wrist on like what motorcycle accident. He's like, which one? So like, that's not a good a good sign for him. Um, the the pitching staff, Mike Clevenger's coming back. They've always been banged up. You Darvish, Blake Snell, they're always injured. It seems like. So I mean, the Padres. It's can they put together put together a competitive team? You know, Hosmer, they could go out and get someone like Michael Conforto. I feel like he'd really help that team out. But, I mean, the I mean, the Rockies and Diamondbacks, yay, who's worse, you know? Yeah. You know, probably both 100 lost teams this year. No offense. I, I, would, I would not be surprised if we see this year the Giants and Dodgers in the NLCS. I would, I would not be surprised. Last year we saw them in the NLDS – because of the way it worked out with the Giants and Dodgers finishing amazingly one game apart, but because of the playoff format at that time, the Giants didn't get a bye. They had to play the Dodgers who ended up being the wild card team. And it just didn't make sense. This year, they're not going to play in the first round. They're probably not going to play in the NLDS because of the format. So I would not be shocked if you see a Giants Dodgers rematch in the postseason for the league championship this year. I mean, this this is an extra two games that are going to be monumental because you know these game these teams separ- separated by one game last year. I mean, game five that that series was so entertaining. It could have gone, gone yeah, exactly. So I mean, it's going to be interesting to see what happens this year. And they basically, beat, they basically beat each other out because the Dodgers were so gassed by the time they got to the NLCS, the Braves mopped the floor with them. Yeah. So, I mean, the Dodgers, they they had to use all their energy just to get past the Giants, just to lose to the Braves. And then yeah. I had to watch another team from the NL East win a World Series. Philly, I hope you suck this year because I don't want to watch you win again. I'm tired of NL East teams winning because it's not the Mets. But when the Mets win – you best believe I am be going crazy, probably be live streaming, probably be freaking out. But that maybe, day is going to come. Maybe when you're 80. <laughs> when I'm 80, no chance. It's happening sooner. 
but maybe hopefully i'm still doing this channel for crying out loud but that's gonna do it that's gonna be our wrap up for division preview so i mean just let us know what you guys think in the comment section below who do you have on the six teams on each league going to the postseason let's have a discussion you know if you're right you know at the end of the year we'll make sure to mention you you know yeah. The, your best guess now is your best guess later on. You know, it's worth a shot. Have some fun. Throw some teams down there in the comment section. All right, guys. It's been great. I've enjoyed it. I can't wait until our next show when we get to pick World Series winners. And believe me, it ain't going to be the max. We'll see about that. Signing off for now, Nick and Drew. Thank you all for watching. See you all in the next one. Peace out.